Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So I recently made a couple of videos uh, dedicated to division templates. Uh, one uh, with overall my favorite division templates uh, and one specifically made uh, uh, for tanks, uh, my best tank designs uh, and the division templates I usually use for them. Now there is one important topic uh, which was not uh, uh, covered in detail in my guides uh, and that's why I'm making this video. Today I would like to talk about uh, the combat width. Now, if you open the dedicated Hearts of Iron 4 Reddit, uh, you will find uh, plenty of discussions about combat width, uh, which one is better, which one is the most optimized. Uh, and of course, as you can see, I named uh, my divisions uh, also based uh, on the combat width. Now, first of all, let's talk about what the combat width actually is. Uh, I mean this to be a short guide, I don't want it to be extremely detailed, so I will go for the short and easy answer. You can see the description up here as well. The combat width uh, indicates uh, the overall size uh, of uh, your divisions, uh, how much space uh, they take up uh, in combat. Uh, we'll see what that means more in detail in a little bit. But what I mean by that is that when you add a new battalion to your divisions, say we add a new infantry battalion to this division, as you can see our combat width is increasing from 21 to 23. So by adding new battalions uh, to our uh, divisions, we increase uh, the combat width. Now, not all of the battalions have the same size. Uh, so if I, if I add some infantry here, the combat width will go up by 2. But if I add some artillery, it will go up by 3. If we add uh, anti-tank, it will go up only by 1. Uh, with rocket artillery, it will go up by 3. And so on, and so on, and so on. Now, of course, every time you add a new battalion, the stats of your uh, division go up. As you can see, by adding some infantry here, our HP, our organization, the recovery rate, the suppression, all of the offensive stats, uh, such as soft attack, hard attack, uh, and even defense and breakthrough, increase. So why don't we just make uh, maximum size uh, divisions? Why don't we just fill them entirely? Well, there are not only advantages in increasing the combat width. Uh, in fact, uh, as you can see, we are also increasing the supply usage of our divisions. Uh, and of course, we are increasing, significantly increasing the cost of our divisions. So we, we may get to the point where we need to decide whether we want a few very big divisions or several smaller divisions. Now, stats and production costs are not the only things we need to pay attention when we design uh, the combat width of our divisions. Uh, there is something else uh, which, uh, as of the latest patches, uh, gain more importance. Uh, and that is the fact that each terrain on which we fight uh, has a specific combat width. If we click a region like this one and we check, uh, we see that this is a mountain uh, region. And in this region, the combat width is uh, 75. If I click on a different region like this one, as you can see, the combat width here is 84. And if I click on a different one, this is planes, uh, here the combat width is uh, 90. Now, this is a Steam guide, a very well made Steam guide, which I usually use as a reference. I did not make uh, this guide, uh, but I will definitely include the link in the description, as this is a very well made guide. Now, here we have an overview of all of the combat widths uh, in the various uh, terrains uh, you can encounter in Hearts of Iron 4. As you can see, each terrain has a maximum combat width uh, and also an ideal combat width uh, for reinforcements. Now, since you are unlikely to have uh, divisions uh, that match uh, the maximum combat width uh, of the terrain in which you are fighting, so you will not have 90 uh, combat width uh, uh, divisions, then your goal is to reach uh, this number to optimize uh, your division for those terrains uh, specifically. Uh, what this means uh, is that if you want to optimize your units for the mountains, uh, the ideal combat width uh, would be 25. Uh, if you're optimizing them for forests, uh, the ideal combat width uh, would be 42, and so on and so on. Now, on this same guide, uh, you can also see a lot of calculations uh, trying to figure out which combat width uh, is in fact ideal, which one works best, uh, and so on. In addition to that, I also found a very good Reddit post uh, which talks about ideal combat widths uh, and which ones are more performing than others. So now that we know what the combat width is uh, and how we affect it by changing our divisions, uh, as well as how it is affected by the terrain, it's time to answer the biggest question. Does combat width really matter? Is it really that important? Now, to answer this question, I would like you to imagine two different scenarios. Now, in one scenario, we're playing a multiplayer game and we're playing against meta players. So in this game, they have the best possible divisions with the best possible designs. They optimize them to fight in the terrain in which we are fighting. Say we are fighting in the forest between Germany and France. Say, yeah, say we are fighting somewhere like here. 
we are playing as Germany, we are fighting a player playing as France, we have the same division templates, uh, the same doctrines, uh, the same kind of air superiority, so let's assume that everything is exactly the same, but we are using a combat with 33 division template, the one I designed, while our opponent is using a combat with 42 template with tanks optimized for forests, as you can see the additional attacks uh, which means the reinforcement rate for forest is 42 so 42 is ideal in forest so because of that uh, if everything else is the same then uh, his divisions are going to win because he has uh, a better more optimized uh, combat width so again in multiplayer if you're trying to be the most meta player possible then having the ideal combat width for each specific terrain is going to be the best. Which means, ideally, you should have some units uh, for forests uh, to fight in the forest. Uh, you should have some units optimized for plains, uh, for when you're fighting in the plains. Uh, you should have some units optimized for the mountains, for when you're fighting in the mountains. And depending on the, on the kind of terrain in which you're fighting, you should have uh, dedicated units. Uh, so in multiplayer, yes, uh, combat with has an impact. Uh, and while it may not be the highest priority, it is something worth paying attention to. Now, let's imagine a different scenario. Now you're playing Hearts of Iron in single player. You're playing versus the AI. Let's say you're playing on regular difficulty, which I believe is what most people do anyway, most of the time. In this case, uh, things are going to be a bit different. The main reason things are going to be different is that the AI is not going to optimize their divisions for the combat width of the terrains in which they are fighting, which means you will not find yourself in the situation in which uh, two equally valid units fight each other but one of the two is optimized for combat with while the other one is not. In fact, uh, to be completely honest with you, in single player on regular difficulty most division templates will work uh, well enough to defeat the AI. Now this brings up one of my main arguments against uh, the optimized combat with uh, meta templates for single player. My point is uh, my 33 combat with uh, early tank divisions, uh, they have very good stats uh, and they can easily push uh, the AI. They can easily defeat the AI in all situations. Now, these divisions are not optimized for any kind of terrain in particular, but they can work on any kind of terrain. In fact, I use these templates and I will post the link up here if you want to check it. I use these templates even to push into the mountains in Spain, which are fortified successfully. In, uh, and mountains are one of the worst possible terrains for uh, tanks uh, to push. So I used these templates to successfully win uh, World War II extremely fast uh, and with basically no casualties, uh, which is, in my opinion, one of the best results you can possibly achieve uh, with armored divisions. Now, at this point, my argument is that uh, these combat with 33 divisions are better optimized uh, than the 42, 43, 44 meta combat with uh, divisions because my divisions are cheaper they consume less supplies, so you can deploy more divisions by the time World War II starts, and they get the job done. And that is the point in single player. You don't really have any advantage having 42 combat with divisions, since they push in the same way, they also push with no casualties. Of course, they are going to work very well, but you are going to get the same result, which is the push done successfully, by paying a higher price for it, both in terms of production cost and in terms of supply usage. Supply usage is not irrelevant because, of course, for meta players, uh, that's not going to be relevant. They are going to manage their supplies perfectly. They are always going to have plenty of supplies. But for the average Hearts of Iron 4 player, supply usage, as well as reliability, are going to be important stats. Because it happens. It happens when you push in the Soviet Union to run out of supplies. It happens to lose equipment to attrition. And that is because, uh, well, I believe most of you out there looking at my videos, checking my guides, you're not the meta pro players uh, of Arts of Iron. Those players, of course, they don't need my guides. But for you, having a template which is a bit cheaper and having a template that has enough reliability to compensate for some mistakes, so for example, ending up in an area with low supplies and losing some tanks to attrition, well, at that point, having a higher reliability is going to make a huge difference uh, on the final outcome. Now, to briefly recap what we said in this video, Although combat width is not as important as it used to be, it still has a relevance, especially in multiplayer. In multiplayer, if two divisions fight each other in the same exact conditions, and one of the two has a more optimized combat width, well, that division is going to have a slight advantage over the other one. In single player, however, that's going to be much less relevant, because the AI does not optimize combat width for their divisions. 
So the 42 combat with meta armory divisions are going to perform extremely well in single player too, naturally. But my 33 combat with divisions are also going to perform extremely well in single player. And the difference is they both get the job done, but my divisions are cheaper and they have less supply usage. That is why in my guides uh, I suggested using these 33 combat with division templates instead of the usual meta 42-43 combat with division templates. Let me just add uh, one last thing before we stop. Now in multiplayer as we said it would be optimal to have a specific dedicated division for each type of terrain so that they can perform the best in that type of terrain. Now obviously that also applies to single player but the difference is that in single player your opponent, the AI, once again is not going to optimize their divisions for that combat with, which means uh, you can avoid doing so as well. In fact I personally find it quite annoying in single player to create dedicated uh, divisions for each terrain. And uh, to be completely honest with you, if you watch my videos you know that already, I tend to use my divisions to push anywhere. I use these tanks to push in the plains, in the forest, in the freaking mountains even, I don't care. As long as they are able to push with no casualties, why wouldn't I use my tanks in the mountains? Why do I need to create a dedicated mountaineer division just to push the Alps when my tanks can do it as well? Now, I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say about this. Uh, if you agree with me or if you think that even in single player it would be best to use uh, optimize meta uh, combat with uh, divisions. Of course, if you disagree with me, I'm very curious to hear your arguments, uh, your opinion. Of course, that can be a chance to possibly improve my future designs as well. So by all means, uh, please feel free to express your opinion in the comments. Uh, I'm looking forward to reading them. Other than that, as usual, thank you for watching uh, and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.